pay. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the September 15th, the uh, Taco Tuesday. Turnaround Tuesday. Uh, it's a lot of Tuesdays. Uh, our terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can always let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. If you'd be kind enough to put radio show question in the uh, subject heading, that'd be great. And, of course, in our Tigers Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the indices uh, trading to the upside. Dow's up 126 points, about a half a percent. That's the weak indice. The second weak indice would be the Russell, up six tenths of a percent, and the transports up seven tenths of a percent. Spot volatile next, trading out at 25.39, back 46 pennies, well below its 50 day exponential moving average. Gold's up three bucks, silver 10 pennies, lights we crude up a buck, natural gas is up a nickel. And the 30-year uh, Treasury bond is back uh, seven ticks, trading out at 176.15. Lead the charge dollar-wise. The upside, Amazon, 53 bucks. Uh, Google, 32. Outset Medical, 30. That's 111 percent. Tesla, up 25. Chipotle, 19. Netflix is up 19. To the downside, Nano X Imaging, down 12 bucks or 24 percent. Ring Central, down 10 bucks, three and a half percent. Clorox, off nine. Uh, Becton Dixon, off six. Overstock.com, down four. So there's things to look at, but I want to look at what you want to uh, look at. We'll go to the first question, actually, that came in. This will get us to the uh, general market out here, so we'll just integrate that. This one coming in from Ian. Ian. And Ian writes in, he says, hey, Steve, I just want to get an update on how you feel about the market long term. I noticed you do not compare this to the 1929 bear market. Have you changed your mind? Do you think it's safe to invest long term, to invest long term long? Thank you. So let's go take a look at the uh, markets out here. So the first thing that Ian mentions and he references is 1929. I just don't show it that often. But voila, we've got that chart right here. And it's interesting that uh, Ian wrote on September 15th. Why is that so interesting? Well, it's because it's written on my chart. So Ian and everybody else that's watching, the top portion of the chart that we're looking at here is the Dow from back in 1929. So this shows us that now what I've done here is I have lined up the 1929 Dow with the March 23rd bottom. Both those bottoms, by the way, form with the same pattern out here, Rose momentum indicator signal. Those are those black diagonal lines. So that's the bottom out there, just to do an analog pattern out here. Now, what's interesting, so when we, when we take a look at lining things up with our March low in the bottom in 1929 out there, September 15th would be the equivalent Number of uh, of number the equivalent number of trading days in between uh, March 23rd and now, when the Dow topped after that first bottom back in 29, and then this thing moved lower for a couple of years out here. It was 1932, but I'd have to go back and you know we 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 could do that. So now here's what's also interesting, Ian. 
If you take a look at breakout levels as the Dow was coming off of the bottom back in 1929. What you're going to see is you're going to see three breakout levels formed. One was at 246.30, one was at 275, one was at 284.90. Now, you also see there's a TD9 count that formed in essence yesterday if we were back in the 1920s, 1930s, that is, out here. That was the top. There's also a road momentum indicator trigger. I don't know why it's not on the, this screen right here. Uh, that also uh, was present at the uh, time. Now, uh, in the case for us, if we take a look at the Dow here, we'll see that September 3rd may have been that top. So whether it's September, because it's got the Rhodes momentum indicator signal, a TD9 count top. So it's, And we have three breakout levels. So no, I have not backed away. Uh, what we do here, or what I'm doing, or certainly during the show in, inside the newsletter as well, is really just taking things one piece at a time. You're asking for what's the long-term forecast here. Right now, I don't have any reason to believe that it's any different with regard to the Dow than what I've been sharing. Now, we're going to make a determination. We're not going to make the determination of that. The chart is going to, or price is going to. But what I can share with you, Ian, is there were three breakout levels that the Dow had to get back through, close below, back in 1930 in order to get that market moving below the lows that it created in 1929. That is the exact same pattern that we have now. Although the Dow itself has moved higher, Percentage-wise versus the prior highs that we had versus what they did in 1929, that doesn't really bother me a whole bunch. It's really when you break support. So the levels to be watching now for the Dow, the three levels, let's go from most recent to the older, 27,686,78, 26,534,38, and 24,781,84. So here you go, Ian, uh, and we just know the market will communicate to us. We know that in essence will be the equivalent of September 15th, 2020. That would have been the top going back to the 1929 episode time frame out here. And we also know that we've got a nice valid top inside of the Dow. Now, the Dow itself, the question is, is this just a two day, two to three day counter trend rally out here? Or is there something else? Again, the market's got to communicate that to us. If we see the Dow, and we'll take a look at the Dow futures, but if we see the Dow close above 28,333.69, Stevie's green line is green. What does that mean? That means that we have a price oscillator is above zero. And if price is able to close above the oscillator and change line, 28,333.78, that number will change slightly out there. Then what we have is a rising price oscillator above zero. And that is bullish. And that would suggest that the markets would go back and test the highs, or maybe they test the uh, breakdown level at the 29,409 area. Whereas, and we could have this out here, this could just be the counter trend rally. Price gets up to Stevie's green line and then makes a B line, heads lower, takes out 27,686 on its way down to 26,534. And if it takes that out, then we know where its next stop is. So, Ian, we just simply have to take this step stuff uh, one uh, day at a time, one moment at a, a time out there. So I hope that that helps you out. I hope that that really answered your question out there. But thanks for writing in and glad that you did so that we could uh, just tie it into the September 15th date. So we get back from this break. Uh, let's just stay with the uh, questions out here. Kay wants to go short Nike, I see. Uh, Zephin. Mm, that might be from a different email. Hector wants to take a look at Apple. And uh, Dennis wants to look at TGB. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 143. S&P is up uh, 34. Uh, before we get to Kay's question on Nike, let me just put this chart over here for the four primary indices. I just focused on the S&P during, uh, during the 1 o'clock update, and uh, we were looking at the Dow out here. So each of the indices, the cash indices, are doing the same thing, or at least these are where I believe price is targeting. Now, we're going to go take a look at profiles for the equity futures contract because that could stifle things. But right now, cash indices, the S&P targeting 3450 this number is going to change slightly but that's a good enough uh, number for you 11688 in the ndx 100 28 335 in the dow 1554 in the russell now the reason you want to have those numbers on a pad of paper is because if price closes above those levels, each of those lines are green out there, that tells us this would be more than a counter trend rally. Now, we'd have to go take a look at the uh, profile levels in the equity futures contracts to give a little bit, potentially a little bit of wiggle room. But if price is above the top of those profiles and above Stevie's green line, then the answer to Ian's question is, you know, the market's not ready to make its move to the downside. And you don't want to be short, not unless you know something that somebody else doesn't know, because those would be market conditions that would be very bullish out here i don't have a problem with you being short right now but you need to give it room up to at least above the 3450 level uh, which is another uh, 33 points out there in the s p may not necessarily be the heat that you want to take but that is where it appears to me that price is targeting that's stevie's green line that's for the four primary cash indices out there Okay, so now let's go to Kay's question. And, of course, I want to answer any of your questions as well. Kay's question is about Nike. And Kay is not a fan of Nike, apparently. No, I can't say that. Kay just wants to go ahead and short the stock. And so her question is, um, where would her stops be if she was going to go short, which she did go short. So uh, right now, here's what we know about Nike. Price is trading above all of the profile levels, daily, weekly, and monthly. So that's not a bearish um, out. That's not a, that's that. There's nothing bearish about that. When you're above resistance, you're above resistance. What we need to find is some kind of topping pattern for you, Kay, and it needs to be on the uh, daily time frame. Price at all time highs inside of Nike. I assume that it is. Let me open up the, the long term chart. Yeah. So we're at all time highs in Nike. Not a bad thing out there. Uh, so you're asking me for you know where do you put your stop? 
do I have resistance levels? I don't really inside of Nike because we're up at new all-time highs. I'd have to go uh, take a look at horizontal trading range charts and so forth. I won't do that at the moment because it takes a bit of time to load all that stuff up and let the system do its calculations. But what I can share with you is that the average true range in Nike is $2.71. And so you're stopping, in essence, even if you're in a um, – uh, even if you are in uh, using uh, options, which you are out here, um, your stop would be two dollars and seventy one cents. I would use times one point six one eight Fibonacci expansion, and that would be above my entry price because if price gets above that, it just says that the the, the thought process to get you in on the short trade mm, didn't take hold. But that doesn't make sense that it didn't take hold, didn't do what it would do. If you're asking me the question, would I go short Nike? And I think you also maybe were asking me that question. My answer would be no. Why would it be no? It would be no because I don't have any kind of topping signal whatsoever. So let's take a look at the daily time frame chart for Nike. What we do know is it has triggered road's momentum indicator signals. But, K, in order for that to identify a top, we need to see some type of bearish reversal candle. That would be step number one. We don't have that. Step number two would be price would need to close below Stevie's green line. That's 117.61. As long as price remains above that, you have a rising price oscillator above zero. That is a bullish set of conditions out there. If price were to close below 117. 61 well then maybe you've got some action but the action would be down to support levels because prices above the daily profiles your support levels are 112.79 111.33 and 106.93 i would expect on any move lower that 111.33 would hold and if it doesn't that tells you you get into 106.93 or more likely 105.12 the actual breakout area but at this stage here, the daily time frame chart is not giving you any kind of signal to go ahead and take a short trade in Nike. But maybe that'll be proven wrong. It's just not wrong as of 122 in the afternoon out there. You're in bar number four of a TD potential TD nine count. That means you got five more trading sessions at a minimum. Maybe it's six more trading sessions before that might identify a top. But then you also have got to see a close below Stevie's green line. Well, maybe the weekly chart has given us some type of signal that uh, Nike is getting ready to crack. So let's go look at it. Well, we don't see that. This is going to be bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says you've got at least a couple more weeks, two to three more weeks before this could identify a, a top out here. So no signal there. Maybe it's the monthly chart that's giving us a signal. No, it's not. Uh, prices stretch, movement higher or less relative energy, doesn't matter. You need a bearish reversal candle, bar number five on a monthly basis. So, okay, I don't see it. If it's me, and I know what you did out here, um, I'm gonna, I, I've answered your question, I think, but I wouldn't take the short. I'd get my money back at this stage of the game. And if Nike gives you a bearish reversal candle, then you can come back in or something. Wait for the market to communicate to you that it's actually identify a uh, top out there. So that's my suggestion to you. Uh, best of luck with that trade and best of luck with your uh, club championship out there. And uh, yeah, use those uh, that muscle activation uh, techniques. Now, you know, uh, uh, it's a muscle activation technique is a uh, um uh, it's a it's a it's a program that I have been uh, going through. Uh, I got that idea from uh, Bryson DeChambeau, uh, who was using it and, and is and is leading the tour in uh, drives out there. Now he also went ahead and put on about twenty thirty pounds. I, I'm not doing that piece of it. It takes too long to try to work that off. I'm trying to go in the opposite direction. But I did go see these uh, muscle ac uh, muscle activation technique uh, specialists out there, and it has it has improved my game too. And I have gotten more distance. Uh, especially off my uh, my three wood and my uh, driver, which is really the was the, the was was sort of the whole thing behind it. Anyway, I won't get, won't get into it, but there are a number. What I was really going to get to was there are a number of of uh, YouTube videos that uh, where you have doctors out there showing you some of the uh, techniques. Um, they're not the same, exactly the same things that that, that my guy is doing uh, with me, but but they're still good. Those exercises out there, they take time, and what they do, folks, is that basically. In my case here, I'm, I'm right-handed, and you would have thought my strong side is my right side. And it was, it probably was, up until a couple years ago when I tore my hamstring. I didn't just tear it. I tore it out there. And uh, and that's taken a, a, a good couple of years to really heal. But uh, during that process, 
all of my uh, gait and everything really changed to my left side. My left side became the strong side, and I'm a right-handed golfer, and what was happening is my right side was not firing through the, sh the shot, and the reason was what muscle activation techniques do is that the, the doctor was able to make that determination by in essence, stretching the muscle and then testing the strength when and, and the contraction, and there was no strength whatsoever. Through those techniques, uh, we were able to completely strengthen it, and so it's kind of like a rubber band. So if you figure on a golf swing, you're doing your rotation, you're kind of stretching that uh, band as you're making your backswing, and then you're supposed to be able to release with acceleration uh, coming through the uh, ball out there. In any event, uh, good luck with uh, good luck with your uh, tournament. Let's go to Hector and the fuel injector. Hector writes in he wants to take a look at Apple and uh, Tim Cook. Apple's got their event going on right now. Uh, don't see on a daily basis anything significant yet. That has happened out here. Here's what we know about Apple. We're going to go to a break and we'll come back and we'll tell you everything we know about Apple. Steve Rose with TFP. We'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We got the uh, Dow up uh, one uh, 120, S and P 30, uh, Nasdaq up uh, 200 points out here. Uh, we're taking a look at uh, Apple for Hector. Hector's really interested in the uh, oscillator and change line on, uh, for the daily and the weekly time frame. So we'll get to that momentarily. Uh, here's what we can see: Apple trading out at 116.86. There was a brand new daily profile that formed on. September 10th, uh, last Friday. And that new profile is above price. That's a bearish signal. It's a bearish signal unless price closes above 121.73. Let's move over to the weekly time frame chart. On the weekly time frame chart, there's a there's a, a new weekly profile that formed last week. It is bearish in structure. We can see that the uh, on a weekly basis how 118.45 is a real key level a real key level of resistance out here now if apple were to close above 118.45 today that would be bullish nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern and we'll consider this a bearish pattern because it is a bearish structured weekly profile so hector you want to watch the 118.45 now if price does close over that the resistance level based upon the profiles are 121.73. It would be a close inside one or above 127, 121.73 that would say, okay, this has got real legs to, room, to, 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 to run up to the top of the daily profile, 132.56. So profile-wise right now, things for Apple are bearish. Why are they bearish? We're below daily profiles. Prices run up into the top of a bearish structured weekly profile, 118.45. It is going to have to be a close above 118.45. That would change our or the chart's mind on that. Let's go take a look at Stevie's white background chart. See what we see out here. You can see wave number seven up at the top. Key reversal bar, bearish engulfing session. Price pulls back to its breakout level. So you've got a valid topping pattern inside of Apple. Whenever you get a valid topping pattern in anything, all that you can really expect or anticipate is price to move back to support. You don't know if it's going to break through support or not. Well, in the case of Apple, it has not broken through support. 113.05 is a key level. If there are two closes below 113.05, then that tells us Apple's getting ready to run to the 90.91 and 93.71 area out there. Its green line, which is what you were asking for, is 122 and change out here. Call it 123. That's on the daily time frame. On the weekly time frame for Apple, what you're going to see is Apple is trading above Stevie's green line. That is at 115.11 right now, Hector. And... Um, and if price is above that, uh, really hard to short Apple, at least from its weekly perspective. You really want to see a close below that area out here. But likewise, we know that there's resistance not that much further up. We took a look at the weekly time frame chart. You didn't ask for the uh, number on the monthly chart, but the Stevie's green line there is 94.14. So our call on Apple, the chart's call on Apple, is uh, if this is just a counter trend rally out here, then Apple will continue to find resistance at the 118.45 level. And any close above 118.45 would be 121.73. And if there's a close above 121.73, then uh, Apple's bearish pattern won't look so bearish anymore. But that's the way that it looks at the moment. So Hector, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that that helps you out with whatever it is you are going to do. Dennis G writes and he says, hey, Steve, what's your outlook for TGB, which is a gold company to Seiko Mines, DT, TGB out here? And uh, trading right now at a buck fourteen above the top of its daily box, which is at one thirteen. So buy a full penny out there. So Dennis, if you're in this uh, stock, you'd like to see it close above one thirteen. If you close above one thirteen, then that'll put it on its daily, weekly, monthly above all profile levels out there. Support, by the way, would be ninety three cents. That's the bottom of its bullish structured profile. It is trading into a swing point from a few days ago. That was on September 9th. That was last 30. 2.5 million shares is trading into a much lighter volume. So Dennis, this is a bit of a concern for you, although you don't have the test and rejection. But for example, if today Taseco Mines was able to punch up above 119, close back below 119 and do it with less than 2.5 million shares, you'd have a failure on price and volume. That being said, it's price close above 113 because that would be bullish out here. So, yeah, I got price moving higher, doing it with uh, really no volume at all, so to speak, vapor volume. Doesn't matter. You close above resistance, you close above resistance out here. And really, if price can close above and stay above 119, tells you that this thing wants to run even higher. Now, let me get it on my other charts out here. thought I had done that, but I did not. So TGB, this will take just a moment here to uh, populate. 
and then we'll give you some additional uh, information. Let me move this over here. And uh, you've got a, ooh, so on TGB, that high from back on September 9th was a TD9 count pattern out there. So you've got a valid topping signal, not until that high gets taken out. Um, well, you not have a topping signal. Duh. Boy, Steve-O, you must have gone to college for that one. I did go to the School of Hard Knocks to figure that one out. So that key, uh, that that high out there, well, I think it was a buck nineteen. Boy, if price can close above that, that would be very positive on the daily chart there for uh, TGB. If we take a look at the weekly time frame here, what do we see? We see price moving higher, doing less relative energy. Price is above a buck fifteen. Well, no, buck fifteen is the uh, weekly. TD9 breakdown level. So closing above that would also be positive. So you got a buck 15, you got a buck 19. We're going to put it on the dollar 19 level out here. But the weekly chart right now looks pretty good just up against a resistance area. On the monthly time frame, what do we have? This is going to be a bar number four on the TD9 count. This says that TGB over time is uh, targeting a $2.38 level. So pull this back here to the uh, daily time frame. You've got a valid topping signal. Not until that high gets taken out will you be out of the uh, woods out there so i hope that helps you out with regard to the patterns for ticker symbol t g b let's see we've got another question here and this is for hector hey we got it's called first first come first serve so hector Wright said he says if given time well we've got the time have we gotten a oh a gdp bottom um you know what? i don't have the chart for that hector uh so i can't answer that question question for you that's also done on a quarterly basis so the answer actually i will give you the answer the answer is i don't know we wouldn't know till next quarter because we had a lower gdp reading for the um second quarter and the third quarter and september 30th so and i don't know when they release the gdp numbers after that so we really won't know hector until probably uh, the first week of october when it is that they release those numbers out there so so i don't know the answer to that question because we'll need that data uh, for the uh, uh for the third quarter so uh, thanks for writing in and uh, when we get that data we'll be able to answer that question both you and i hd writes in he says i have some cwh but was stopped out today. Oh, wait, we've got a caller on the line. My apology. Ray, thanks for calling, and thanks for holding. Sorry about that. How are you doing, Steve? I am doing well, and uh, sorry that I overlooked that. Uh, NAT, right. Nordic American Tankers, is what you wanted to take a look at. So tell us what you're right. doing and how I can help you. Uh, I've got a position. I'm slightly underwater, and I was thinking about selling some... Uh, uh, calls against my position uh, and holding on at this point. But I was trying to get a sense of how far I could pull back or what the upside uh, range is in the okay. next two to three months. Perfect. Uh, hold on through this break, please. And we'll come back and we'll rip apart Nordic American tankers. Steve Rhodes with TFNN with Ray in Sarasota. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Ray in Sarasota. We're going to go take a look at uh, Nordic American uh, tankers right now. The Dow's up 131. S&P is up 32 points. So, Ray, as we take a look at the uh, charts out here, the first thing that I want to do is to help you understand what Nordic American tankers is doing on its daily, its weekly, and its monthly time frame. So I'm going to give you the data, and then you go back and you figure out from a trading standpoint what it is that you want to do. So the first question that I would like us to answer is, where is support? So we take a look at the daily time frame. That's going to be the very left-hand panel. What you'll see is this had formed a new bear structured daily profile about four trading sessions ago. What a bear structured profile, so a profile, what it does, it gives us a, it, it's kind of like um, the yard, the, the, uh, the, the chains, the first down chains in a football game. And in those chains, we've got a beginning and an end. And profiles, our beginning and end is going to be the top and the bottom. The top is where sellers are. The bottom is where buyers are. Now, the really cool thing is in between that range, there are, buyers and sellers agree upon where they believe price is fairly valued. That's the center of the profile. That happens to be at $3.91. The top is at 401. The bottom is at 361. Because the center is closer to the top than it is the bottom, that's why I give it that bearish structured profile. Being able to close above a bearish structured profile, which it did yesterday, is bullish. Now, was yesterday a false breakout? Possibly. But if price is going to pull back, once it breaks above, it closes above the top of a bear structured profile, what I've noticed is when price does pull back, where it will find support is the center of that profile, $3.91. Today's low, $3.91. I believe that this stage, what the daily time frame chart from Nordic American tankers is communicating to you is it is at support. And it had broke above, closed above resistance out there. Now, you'd like to see it close back above $4.01. You'd like to see it do it today because you want to have two bars above a breakout uh, level out there. Does that make sense so far, what I've shared with you? It, it does. Perfect. Yes. Now, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we will see that three weeks ago and last week, price pulled right back to support. That happens to be the bottom of the profile. Now, here, the center of the box is it's pretty much in the center uh, at 565 and the top is at 699. So, you know, where buyers and sellers 
are present. But what the weekly time frame is telling you is that the low from last week, the hammer candle that it formed, may be a bottom. Because on a weekly basis, that was right at support. And then when we take a look at the monthly time frame, this is a bullish structured profile. And that fair value where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair values at 347. We've seen that low. That was a low from the hammer candle from about five or six trading sessions ago. So the daily, the weekly, the monthly are all at support. And so they don't suggest. Now, prices close below support. Then we got a whole different animal out here. But I wouldn't be jettisoning out of Nordic American tankers just based upon this profile information. Is that right? Any questions? Any yep. questions? Any questions there? Yeah, I, I was kind of thinking the same thing as far as it hitting support about a week ago. So. Perfect. But now that, I, I there's just a, need you to confirm. <laughs> oh, hey, no problem. That, that's what that's what I'm here for. And it, it's really just me narrating the charts. You get to look at them. So this is nothing that I'm making up or pulling out of my arse or anything along those lines out here. Now, when we go to my other charts out here, we can also see that the breakout level on a daily basis for Nordic American tankers was 327. Price didn't get all the way down there. You got to wave number seven. That's letter G on my screen out here. That is a bottoming pattern. And it was pretty close. It still looked that bottoming pattern is above the breakout level of 327. So that's pretty good. Now, the next battle for you, other than the ones we just took a look at on the profiles, is at 441. If price can close above that, then the next battle is going to be 506. That's based upon the daily time frame out here. On a weekly basis, I don't have really anything new to uh, share with you other than this tells us that you've got a battle on a weekly time frame at 441, should price get up to that level out here. And on the monthly time frame, I don't have anything additional, but there's nothing here on the monthly chart that suggests anything different than when you and I have already taken a look at. So that's what the charts are communicating to you and I when it comes to Nordic American tankers. Excellent. Excellent. Big help. Really appreciate it, Steve. My pleasure. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding and have a terrific Tuesday. You too. You bet. Uh, let's go to our next caller. That is Ron in uh, Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Yeah, great, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. Uh, I'm here in Denver last Tuesday. The, it, our weather went from 90 to 30 in the same day. Oh, really? Yeah. We saw snow. It froze that night, and it had been as high as 90. That's oh. the way. That's Colorado weather. So, uh, man, I, I, that, first it would make me sick just to know that that happened. <laughs> but then they yeah, actually no, that was a 60 day through. swing last Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what I was calling about was Clovis, CLVS. Yeah. Uh, they're head and neck lung cancer, and they're going in front of a the Fed meeting uh, on the 17th of September. And I just wondered, I bought some calls yesterday morning. Does volume, uh, is there enough volume to suggest that smart people or the people are accumulating it, or is there anything that you can read from the volume on that, CLVS? Well, as opposed to the, the, the volume question, not that I don't want to answer it, I'd really rather take a look at how is this trading in relationship to support and resistance. You're sure. above resistance on the daily basis. That was at 570. So this says, okay, I want to run higher. Run higher to where? I'd like to go to the weekly time frame. Well, shoot. The weekly time frame, the resistance level is at 685. Granted, it's only Tuesday. So I don't know what it's going to look like on Friday. But right now, you're at least trading above a resistance level of 685. So that looks pretty good. And as long as price can stay above that, that tells you your next price target is 871. That is the center of the monthly profile out there. So in essence, price has held support, the monthly bottom of its profile, the weekly bottom of its profile, the daily bottom of its profile. So everything there is suggesting to you and I that 871 is its next uh, price target. Any questions about that? No, no, just uh, uh no, that's good. I didn't have a target, so I appreciate that. Okay. And, so uh, now let's look at the daily time frame chart. I, I was here. just kind of curious to see whether or not uh, some – do you see volume picking up prior uh, – considering ah, – yeah, I, I saw I, it one do. day it picked up yesterday, but then it fell off and came back up. Uh, well, but so yesterday was, but yesterday, so you did have nice volume yesterday, 12 million shares. You had a wide ranging bar, uh, so a sign of strength out there. You don't have to have sign of strength after sign of strength after sign of strength. You got the sign of strength yesterday. Okay. You really got it the day before because uh, there was some volume was increasing. You closed above the top of the daily profile out there. So, so I think. 
from the volume standpoint, the way Stevie would answer that question for you is you already got those signals out there. Now where price right. is likely targeting, you're day number five of a TD9 count. So that says within the next three to five trading sessions, it could, not that it will, but it could identify a TD9 count top. We'll have to come back to that. Price likely targeting 767 next and above that 1020. That's based upon the daily time frame. The weekly time frame chart here for Clovis Oncology. Um, do I have anything of significance out here? 721 is your resistance level. And if this close above 721 on a weekly basis, then you're looking at about 1353 next. So that's what I see in the charts when we take a look at uh, Clovis Oncology. But it, it looks, I, I don't have any reasons to suggest that you uh, not uh, take the, stay, stay in the position that you're in. Well, I'll wait, uh, I'll wait to see what the Fed says and hopefully these guys. Oh, if we're going to a hard break, Ron, we'll my apology. Hey, have a great day. We'll Appreciate it. Back, folks. Thank you. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Dow's up 107, S&P is 29. Let's go out to Palm Harbor and speak with Jim. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm good, Steve. How are you? Very good. Thank you. So a short segment that we have. I know you want to talk about the S&P 500. Uh, give me your question specifically. Okay. Uh, I'm actually looking at the IVV, which is a, a S&P fund. And um, the February 19th high 
I'm using as a support level for today on a daily chart, and it's uh, it's above that today. And I know a lot of times you say two days in a row to make sure it's uh, going to hold, and then I'm sure it's below your uh, red green line by a little bit right now. And I'm just wondering, will it clear your red green line in order to go on up to the recent high of three sixty twenty six uh, over the next say week? I'm good. I'm just not sense. that good. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm good. I like to think I'm good, but I'm not that good to know that answer. But what we do know is we do know where that next battle is, and you pointed it out. And here's what we know about the S and P 500. S and P 500 made that top back on September 3rd and pulled back, and uh, on Friday tested and rejected its breakout level. That was a buy point. That's at 33.2644. Price is now headed up towards Stevie's green line. That's at 34. Oh, you don't see the chart out here. I guess I should show you the chart. That would make it easier. So here we go. So now we've got the chart. So you can see exactly what uh, the S&P 500 did. If price closes above 34.50, then the answer is that's then signaling to you and I that price will likely head back to retest that September 3rd high. A counter tread rally ends at about that 34.50 level out there. Jim, I don't have the uh, abilities, the tools, the uh, foresight, the knowledge to know whether or not support or resistance will get broken. But what we do know is where okay. they're at. And when they do get broken, then that gives us the information that we're looking for. I wish I could give you more than that, but uh, watch 34.50 okay. on the move higher. You bet. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. Folks, stay tuned for two more great hours, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday. Take care.